Okay, question. That it says, what is the value of when two x plus y bracket x plus z when x is equal to y equal to two and z is equal to three? Now, in order to solve this question, we are just going to punch in our values. Our x is going to be two, and our y is going to be two. Our x is two, and our z is um, three. So this is going to be 4 plus, this will be 2 times 5. So this is going to give us 4 plus, and uh, this will be what, 10. So this is going to give us uh, 14. So the correct answer here, it's going to be 14. So I'm going to mark my D. Now, question 39 says, a car traveled 288 km at an average speed of 96 km per hour. On the return journey, the average speed was reduced to 72 km per hour. What was the average speed for the whole journey? Okay, so in order to solve this question, now, I want you to understand, first of all, that uh, speed, it's giving us, so speed is giving us distance divided by time. So this is the first thing you need to establish. Now, the car did travel of that so we are going to do um since our speed it's a 96 kilometer we'll do 96 is equal to uh our distance covered is uh 288 divided by time so all we'll do is we'll get the time so time is going to be what 288 divided by 96 so and this will give you a total of uh, three hours okay so this is for the journey. Then, now it said on the return journey, the average speed was reduced to 72 km per hour. Now we'll still apply the same formula. So that 72 will be, remember, return journey will still cover the same 288. So this will be 288 divided by T. So therefore, T will be 288 over 72. And when you do 288 divided by 72, you're going to get T as 4 hours. Now, the next thing I need to, you're going to do is you get your total time for the journey. Now, total time will be 3 plus 4, and that's going to give us 7 hours. Now, the total distance covered, you will need to get the total distance because they are asking us the average speed for the whole journey. So, the total distance covered is going to give us uh, 288 plus 288. So, that's going to be, when you sum this up, you are going to get 576 kilometers. Now, having gotten the total distance and the total time, your average speed is going to be distance over time, which will be 576 divided by 7 hours. Now, when you do this division, you are going to get, um, this will be, 82 whole number and you're going to get 2 over 7 kilometer per hour so when you do your long division of this you are going to get this so the correct answer here is c so as easy as that you can solve these questions now if this is your first time of coming to this channel don't forget to hit the subscribe button and click on the notification bell because we are going to be solving all the kcpe questions now question 40 says a rectangular tank of water is 2.5 meter long, 1.5 meter wide, and 2.0 meter high. The tank is full of water. What is the amount of water in liters in the tank? Now, the first thing you need to do is calculate um, the volume of the tank. So, you know that this is um, a rectangular. So, volume is going to be um, the length times the width times the height or the breadth. So um, now we have this. So we are going to do 2.5 times 1.5 times 2. Now, when you multiply this tree, it's going to give you 7.5 meter cube. Now, remember the question says we should find the answers in liter. And I want you to know that 1 meter cube will give us 1,000 liters. So having established this, then you're going to have 7.5 meter cube to be what 7.5 times 1000 divided by 1. So if you have your meter cube here, you have your liters, 
and you have your meter cube. So meter cube is going to cancel out meter cube. So you're going to have 7.5 times 1000 and that's going to give us 7.5. You move your decimal three places, one, two, and three. So you are going to get a total of 7.5 and that's our final answer. So we are going to be taking the correct answer at D. So as easy as that, you can attempt this question too. Question 41 says, in the figure below, line PQ and RS are parallel. Line TU and VW are transversals. What is the size of angle Y? In order to solve this question, um, we will say um, angle R Y V. Okay, so that's here. It's 130 degree. Now, this is called corresponding angles. Okay? Corresponding angles. Then, we're going to get here will be what? R Y W. That's here. R Y W will be 180 minus 130. You call it angles on a straight line. On a straight line. Now, if you notice, this angle here, it's 130 degree. So we are looking for here. So here is going to be 180 minus 30, and this is going to give us what? 50 degree. So that's what? 50 degree. Now, Looking at this 56 here, that's R, Y, and T is going to be what? 56 degree. And you're still going to call it what? Corresponding angles because it's corresponding. Now watch. It's the same thing as here and here. So that's why it's called corresponding angles. Now, in order to get your... Now, having known that here it's 56, here is 56, and here is 50 degree, and we have here as y, look at this 3, you see that it's angle on the straight line, so you can see 56 plus 50 plus y is supposed to give us what? 180 degree. Our reason is still angle on a straight line, okay? So having established that, you cannot find 56 plus 50 is going to give us 106 plus y, that's 180. Therefore, our y is going to give us 180 minus 106. And when you do the subtraction, you are going to get 74 degree. And so your correct answer here is um, C. So I'll mark my C.